Hello again everybody and today's talk is about Masada. It's one of the most recognisable images associated with Judea Judaism and indeed of the whole classical world. It raises, the Masada raises many questions both about then and now. Archaeologically it's been fairly extensively excavated, particularly in the 1960s by Yigel Yadin. It's been much discussed then uh, since then by other scholars like Joe Zias and Azriel uh, Gorski, others as well, but what we need to know is what happened, when it happened and why does it matter. So first of all, um, Masada is a rock almost a thousand feet high, uh, it arises more or less vertically out of the desert uh, in Judea, in modern Israel. It was first fortified uh, in a serious way by the Hasmonean king Alexander Janaeus in the first century BC but most of the buildings that have survived until today archaeologically were built by Herod the Great. Now Herod the Great was a very paranoid king, he feared that people would try and do him in and they did from time to time and so he fortified Masada and had various things built there uh, so that he could run away to there if he got driven out of Jerusalem. In particular, he knew that uh, being in such a place would be vulnerable to siege, so he built a very sophisticated series of water conduits and very large water cisterns so that he wouldn't run short of water. There are very large storehouses, a number of other uh, buildings there as well. So, the archaeology, uh, altogether, um, it's uh, about roughly it's an, uh, a sort of um, diamond shape. Uh, at its largest extent it's more than 600 metres long and it's about 300 metres wide so it's a pretty big sort of place. It's uh, estimated it's about 7 hectares in total so the size of uh, a large village, a small town. The archaeological finds are remarkable uh, and they include amongst other things a date palm seed uh, which survived uh, from ancient times until modern times. That was planted in 1961 and actually germinated and holds the record for being the oldest seed actually to germinate. There's also a cache of ostrica, pieces of broken pottery with names written on in Hebrew, uh, a number of scrolls with uh, Old Testament texts on there and some other texts as well, and nearly 30 skeletons. So why is Masada so famous? What happened there to make it so? After the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD and the putting down of uh, the first Jewish revolt, uh, almost a thousand zealots or perhaps Sicarii who were a kind of another resistance organization, Sicarii were slightly more violent than the zealots I guess, uh, they took refuge there. For two years they harried the Romans and probably other Jews who were living on the plains nearby According to the, the historian Josephus, a Jewish writer, writing in Greek but living much of his adult life in Rome, um, Lucius Flavius Silva and the 10th Legion, uh, along with a load of auxiliary uh, reinforcements and support troops, then besieged the rock in 72. Um, Initially they were unsuccessful in starving people out, uh, starving the Jews out because there were such uh, extensive supplies uh, using the uh, building put there by Herod the Great. So he decided that he was going to build a ramp uh, from the floor of the desert up to the top of the rock and this was a thousand feet high. That was a very big ramp. At first slave labour was used and then pressed labour of soldiers who didn't like it very much uh, were pressed to build this gigantic ramp. And the idea was that you could march uh, a number of soldiers up and put a siege tower up there and you could then attack the defences of the fortress on the top. It took a very long time. Interestingly, some of the wood which was used to structure this ramp uh, has been analysed now and it shows that the climate in that area in ancient times was perhaps a little wetter than it is now. Perhaps, uh, so that helps to explain how the water supply didn't run dry by the end of the siege of Masada. Anyway, the Romans got to the top of the ramp and after a, a small delay because of adverse weather, eventually they broke in. So, bearing in mind there were a thousand zealots uh, on the top of the rock, what did the Romans find when they got in there? Two women and five children were found hiding in a water cistern. Everybody else was dead. 
according to Josephus. What seems to have happened is that they had chosen lots uh, as to who was going to kill who, and gradually they'd whittled the number down until the last man killed himself. Those ostraca that I referred to earlier may well have been used in the selection process. We can't prove this, but a number of names seem to suggest that that might have been uh, associated with that uh, and included the name of the Jewish leader on the top of the rock who was called Eliezer ben Yair. There are some scholars who suggest that Josephus is simply not telling the truth and this mass suicide didn't happen and couldn't have happened. Uh, partly because of the uh, anathema of suicide and partly because we don't actually know where the bodies were. If there's only 30 skeletons there you'd expect rather more and those 30 skeletons aren't complete either. So uh, there are questions about the mass suicide. Personally I think it's a, extremely unlikely that Ju Josephus would have made up such a, an amazing thing. To, to have just totally invented that would have been almost beyond comprehension and I find that, and I find that very difficult uh, to believe. The Romans would have taken the bodies from there and they would have probably buried them in a mass grave uh, somewhere not very far away. That yeah, remains to be seen and perhaps archaeology will show that at some day. The ostraca, the ostraca which were found show that some sort of selection process for something was happening and that will be in keeping with Josephus' account of this. But why did the Romans bother uh, to do all this? Why did they spend so long with so many thousands of men um, dis destroying the rock of Masada? Well it was clearly important to them to see that they had absolute control. Why did the Jews do what they did, assuming there was the mass suicide? Well, they wanted to show that uh, they were going to make choices and they were not going to give in to the slavery of the Romans. And it's, it's very much uh, intimately wrapped up with the whole idea of Jewish identity and Jewish nationhood. Why does it matter now? Masada is probably uh, the most... Uh, visited place in modern Israel. It's the biggest tourist attraction. It's very much a modern icon for uh, Israelis. It's uh, interesting that Yigal Yadin, the archaeologist who did the excavations in the 1960s, was a former military man and so he was very much a nationalist and so the idea of Masada and the resistance to the Romans would have been uh, very much in keeping with his personal politics. It's interesting also that Jewish recruits to the Israeli uh, Defence Force every year go to the top of Masada and they swear what is sometimes called the Masada Oath, which is that Mas Masada will never fall again. And so it's very much wrapped up with the idea of uh, Jewish nationhood and Israeli nationhood. It's been the subject, Masada has been the subject of a number of novels, uh, of TV series and films and even a jazz suite uh, written by American jazz musician uh, John Zorn. Whatever the actual details are, whatever the truth of whether Josephus was telling the accurate truth uh, or whether he was embellishing the details or making up something entirely, this strange but very powerful image of Jewish pride in nationhood and resistance to terrible threats matters now. Perhaps at some point there will be more archaeology or perhaps more texts will be found which will show whether Josephus was telling the truth. I don't think we have yet heard the full story of Masada.